know that as climate is rapidly changing, species are responding in many ways. Some are spreading polewards, others are adjusting their yearly life to better match the altered timing of spring. Some species are becoming more abundant, while others are declining in numbers. Is there any logic to why different species are affected the way they are? How will responses of individual species affect the wider context of communities and ecosystems? We set out to find answers to these questions from the high Arctic tundra. Here, the undertaking is simplified by the fact that Arctic communities are fairly simple and species poor. As these locations are often remote and hard to access, the role of climate change as co the causal agent of ecosystem change stands out from other human disturbances. Unfortunately, the remoteness of these Arctic areas also complicates their study which is why we reached out to the global research community working in the Arctic. This way we could collect snapshots of insect communities and their functions in the ecosystem in a standardized way. Specifically, we focused on parasitoid insects, their hosts, and the flowering plant which defines their habitat, the mountain avens. Parasitoids are typically wasps or flies, which use other arthropods as living nurseries for their offspring. Being on top of the arthropod food chain, they can be expected to be especially sensitive to environmental change. But to make sense of the parasitoid diversity, we classified the species based on what kind of hosts they use and at which life stage they attack their host. The proportion of different host use tells us something about the relative abundances of the host taxa at our sampling sites. The way in which the hosts are used seems to be linked to the parasitoids' ability to survive winters and also how sensitive they are to changes in the yearly timing of their host life cycle. Since the Arctic has already experienced considerable climate change and this change is far from uniform, we could directly compare areas with different climatic histories. Although in agreement with our hypothesis, we were still quite surprised to find that the way climate has been changing explains the structure of parasitoid communities better than the climate itself, despite it covering everything from subarctic to high arctic. This implies that climate change pushes communities away from the stable states they have acquired through slow eco-evolutionary processes and into states dominated by few climate change winners. In detail, we found areas where especially winters have been warming to be dominated by parasitoids that use flies or gnats as their hosts. Areas where summers have become warmer and presumably drier had more moth larvae eating a mountain avens flowers and parasitoids depending on moth larvae for hosts. And while our distributed study is only based on snapshot observations, we were able to show that this climatic favoritism of different insect groups indeed happens through time. Long-term monitoring in northeast Greenland shows moth larvae being abundant after warm and dry summers, while musket fly numbers plummet in the same conditions. All in all, we can conclude that we can indeed make sense of species responses by focusing on the right species traits. That climate change has likely already had a significant effect on Arctic insect communities. And finally, that by working together through international networks, we can better address global phenomena such as the effects of climate change.